Uh, welcome to another episode of the Gap Down Backer Podcast. Uh, Coach Derry and I have a special guest with us today, and I'm probably going to butcher his name as we do this because I didn't prepare properly like an idiot. Um, Seth Storer, is that right? That's it. That's it perfect. Coach. The OC at Auburn High School in Southwest Louisiana by Charles. Um, Coach, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. I- I'm glad to hear that. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit of jet sweep. Joker and a play action pass, kind of a little mini series that he does. Uh, me and Coach have been messaging back for the past couple weeks. Um, we actually kind of traded some film and some ideas. I appreciate that trap play, Coach. By the way, it worked. No problem. Yeah, I mean, we shared a, a little uh, quarterback trap that helped them out. That kind of helped us out earlier in the year. Um, but I thought it was actually one of the cool parts about that is we we made a lot of unbalanced off empty out action for Jet by Pitt. But you never kept it. You could never keep the defense honest about it. I mean, we had a little mini play action pass off of it, but it really wasn't play action. You know what I mean? But it was hard to kind of keep those linebackers from flowing crazy over top. So just to be able to see that quarterback, I was like, I kind of thought they were crazy for a second. I liked it because it was a, it was a cheap play. It was amazing. I was like, whoa, it worked. He's yeah. gone. We did it twice. I was like, well, right, that's it's a it's essentially, you're just te- teaching trap again. You're just some small minor adjustments to it. And like again, if you if because we we all get these stupid defenses, like and that I mean we're not gonna see the same thing two weeks in a row. It just it's annoying. So but oh well. Um, so like I said, coach, we're gonna talk Jet Joker and play action pass today. Um, I, Do y'all get a ton of under front? Um, I'm trying. That's to all I run against Winky team. That, that, I've always thought that was that, you get that all the time. I mean, it, yeah, so that's. Um, we we really, got something it, about mid season this year. We we typically get more of like a four four six six two, whatever you want to call that. But I think once we started like when we played Stebbins this year, um, they kind of went they kind of bounced in and out of an under um, against us. I mean that was kind of the natural adjustment for their five three. I mean not four five four three. Um, and then we kind of saw it a little bit afterwards after they did it. But a lot of times we see more of like a more of a bear front. Or very or four four front. Those are kind of the two most common yeah. things we see. Um, the one team that does run an under front, we didn't. We uh, that was one of the games that got canceled for COVID. Yeah, we would have saw an under front almost the entire game. But I, 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 I think under front when I, we talk about defending the win team, it kind of dictates where you can run things. In my eyes, you know what I mean. I can kind of dictate where you run trap. I can kind of dictate. Well, if you run trap to a one tap, yeah, you lose yeah, some angles on certain plays when you when you see it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean, jet tough too because now you have your tackle and your tight end essentially on tackle one on one with a hard block, you know, and then the tight end kind of help the wing. A we used to, bit. we used to go jet weak and we see it. Yeah. Jet against to me. Yeah, and no, the no, jump no. play we got is kind of our it's kind of our under beater. Yeah, I have to see it. That way, I can know what teams are going to do against me every time I play win T. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it, I mean, like I said, he's freakish about that. And but again, that I mean, nice thing about seeing that that front is you kind of know what works and what doesn't. Um, whereas when we get some of these other weird fronts, it's kind of like trial and error, maybe for that first drive or two. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it, again, that's, I, I getting a jump defense. I hate it. No, yeah, that, that's why that's why I think that trap is because we knew we'd see that junk defense again, and it's just like, well, when you don't when you leave one linebacker in the middle of the field and one safety, I will take an athletic quarterback one on one with those type of people, and then when I know you're going to stretch one of those guys out because I've essentially gone empty by put by bumming my fullback out, okay, I, I worst case I've gained eight yards, worst yep. case, best case, deuces. I mean that's. I mean I'll take it. So um, your quarterback can move too, coach. Oh oh yeah. He, I mean he not. I mean he can run and like I said, if we had more of a pure quarterback, he he would play receiver for us, um, and probably a little bit of wing this year, um, just because of how fast he is. Uh, he's also one of our starting safeties. Great kid, great family. Um, I I would endorse him all day long to any college that calls and. And if there are anybody listening, I have some, a fast kid for you. Um, but, um, yeah, he's just a great kid. Very smart, very athletic, good leader. I mean, just, I mean, I can't say nothing. That's that's the reason why I love doing the 
assistant athletic director stuff I do in the winter because he plays basketball too, and it's fantastic to just talk to him for 20 minutes. Um, so, but yeah, so let's let's kind of move on to Jed, Coach. Um, All right, Coach. Now, now do you do you run that Speed Kills uh, Twitter pay Twitter too? Okay, because I know you followed me, so. Um, yep. Like I said, look look at how like I love guests that are just organized and look good. Uh so coach, um a lot of the stuff that we do we got from uh these brothers over here, Josh and Justin Gibson. They're at a Pleasant Grove in Texas and they do some some really good stuff out the wing tee, uh sugar huddle, a lot of overload sets. Um and uh so a lot of what we do, we kind of took from them and just kind of made it fit our kids. Um, and then these are just coaches that I've visited with the past four years and kind of, um, you know, took bits and pieces of what they do and, and meshed it with our stuff. Uh, Pat Murphy from uh, he's in he's out of Montana, I think he retired. Yeah. But we did a, some some of his gun stuff a couple of years ago, um, and we didn't do a lot of it. Kind of did we did like those little buck series at the counter. Um, but this year we were pretty much exclusively under center wing T. Have you reached out to Jim McKee in Kentucky yet at all? I have not. He's a good one. We're going to have him on the podcast here soon. Um, actually, he he will be the episode right after you as of right now. Um, but he's a good one. He's gone like 14 straight years with like 10 wins or more. Uh <sighs> Um, he's the only not, and uh, as I say this on a podcast, from my knowledge and from what I've been told, he's the only school in the past ten years that's won a state title that isn't from the city of Louis- Louisville. Really? Um, yeah, I think I don't know if that's in all of Kentucky divisions or just his division. Yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, so he, I mean, he's from my understanding, he's really good. Nate Eimer and Sean Coltis, who we've had on the podcast before, I don't think they've aired yet. Eimer's has, Coltis hasn't. He's another, those are two other good guys for you to reach out and along with Mike Morrissey uh, if you're looking for more people to reach out to. And I, I tell yeah, that to you. Yeah, all the time. I, I tell that to you and I tell that to all of our people too. Like anybody wants to reach out, those those three, Imer, Morrissey, and Coltis are three great guys to reach out to as well. Um, and obviously if anybody can get a hold of Roger Holmes, that's always another. Man, I got to sit down with him for breakfast. Our head coach lined that up last, yeah. last year. Got some good play action stuff from him, and just some some overall rules. So we went and listened to him that night at the clinic. Uh, this had to be right before you know all the COVID stuff, and then uh, our coach talked him into coming out of breakfast with us that next morning, and we <laughs> talked to him for a good hour and a half. So that yeah, was good. I, I I'm gonna give him a call after um, Christmas break. I figured I'd let him finish the season, and before I start bugging him, and um, yep. then I'm gonna try to get him on here and at least talk a little bit. Um, and kind of go from there. So, but yeah, you can kind of continue where we at, coach. Before I rudely interrupted you. All right, coach. Uh, this is a little bit about our head coach, uh, Darrell Pelican. He's uh, won district three out of five years. He got a eighty uh, percent win percentage, quarterfinals, semifinals. Uh, ain't ain't got over a big hump yet, but you know, hopefully he'll stick around a little bit longer, and, <laughs> and we'll we'll make it there one day. Um, well, I'm fortunate, Coach. He he brings me all over, and he lines me up with top of the line wing T guys. Yeah, uh, at least twice a year. Uh, I think in January we're gonna meet with Kenny Simpson. Ken- Kenny's a really good dude. I, I've Talk had about Ken- gun stuff. Yeah, um, we got a different group of kids this year than we're used to, so we might we might go back to doing some of the gun stuff that we did in the past. Um, not sure about that, but. Uh, yeah. Just go and if we can learn, you know, one or two things over there, we'll take it. So yeah. I'm fortunate to have him bring me along and learn a lot of stuff along the way. Like I said, Kenny's a good dude. Kenny will tell you whatever he, pretty much you want to know. Yeah, I, I, I started watching his uh videos, you know, and then yeah. I, I bought one of his books. So kind of familiar with some of his things. Uh, here's just some statistics. Um, one of the things that, that we kind of hang our hat on is that 38 yards per completion the last three seasons. Um. Whenever we throw it, we don't hit the check down very often. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if we do, we're, we're usually lucky enough it's on a bootleg in the flats and, and the kid makes a play because he's an athlete. So, um, you know, that's that's something that we try to do is uh, stretch the field, um, even though, you know, we're going to run the ball 95% of the time. When we throw it, we're going for the throat, so to speak. 
Uh, wide wing tee. I'm not even gonna get into that, Coach. This is for a little clinic I'm doing later. But uh, y'all know why. You know we do it. We're small. We're at the smallest classification that has football. Um, but we do usually have some some good athletes. So you know all the angle blocking and the pulling is good for us. Um, our guard the past three years, our weak side guard has been about 140 pounds. Jeez. Yeah. I right, saw so our jet rules, coach. It's basically, you know, yeah. uh, reach, play, side, every way. We're going to go over jet week, just uh, to keep it simple. We'll pull the play side guard depending on the front and depending on the kid. Um, we have a couple different calls um, that we'll let those guys make, you know, as they get older. Um, but like I say, we're talking JV, everybody's going to reach. And then once we teach them the reach rules and proper technique, then we'll, then we'll move on to the pulls. This is our base formation. Combo block on your jet. Do what, coach? Do you, do you ever combo block on your jets, or are you no, more just mm-hmm. reach? If no one's there, climb to the back of. We hard, we hard reach and we hard climb. Um, and uh, yeah, we never combo anything, coach. Okay. Um, some of the things that we emphasize, as far as in the backfield, is. The, the ball carrier is never going to be wrong. And when I say that, as long as he's moving full speed, he's not going to be in trouble. Sure. It's the quarterback's job to get you the ball. Now, if you're not going full speed, you're going to be in trouble. You see what I'm saying? So we, we don't want them worrying about the ball. We want them worrying about getting full speed. And uh, quarterback steps, we call it a push-pivot step. You know, and we want him to push and pivot to the play side where he's giving them the ball on the outside foot of the play side guard, if possible. Um, the past two years, we did a good job of it. This year, earlier in the season, um, we, we missed a couple handoffs on Jet just because the, the quarterback's feet. Uh, it was a new guy, and, and he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't quite good enough yet at getting that big step on the push pivot. But that's something that we preach and we handle our guys on. And um, so I think that's one of the reasons that we uh, we do run it pretty well. Is our backs, they, they get it pretty fast and full speed. Um, so we run a counter off of it. We run a joker, which is like an inside counter tackle trap with a lead guy. Uh, we run our ISO, or we call it wham. You know, we run our regular guard trap. We'll run G. Uh, we do a couple of different things. We basically run the whole offense off of the jet motion. Okay. And we'll do it from a base set, or we'll do it from an overload heavy set, or overload um, weak set. You got your if thens, you know that's the kind of the bud word buzzwords right now. All right, so uh, if you get a fast flow backside linebacker, then we're gonna run our counter or our joker or a backside quarterback wham. Um, and we have diagrams for these. If you want me to show you those, coach, we can. Uh, but our, our joker is probably our favorite. So first, say we're running jet weak, and uh, we got to overload fullback to the weak side, and uh, that backside backer starts scraping hard, scraping hard. And uh, they give us a front that we like to run the joker to, which we can run it or pretty much any front. We like it to be an under front or, you know, a base front with a three technique. We're going to we're gonna kick the three or wider. We're going to lead up with the halfback. And so that's kind of our, our answer for the backside linebacker if he's making a tackle. Um, if the play side linebacker is kind of chasing hard and that backside guy staying home for counter, we'll hit him with just a wham. Uh, you know, to the weak side or belly, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll do it two ways. We'll run it to the fullback or we'll overload it and run it with the quarterback, kind of similar to the way you do the trap coach. Uh, he'll reverse out, fake jet, and then he just follows the fullback into the hole. Uh, you know, if we're playing a team that's interior lineman. You know, they don't have great technique. They're kind of shooting up the field. We'll just hit them with trap, quarterback trap, or just a base trap. Uh, the defensive end flies out. We're going to go play side belly or play side wham, whatever you want to call it. Um, as soon as the free safety gets a little nosy, that's what we call it, starts walking into the box, giving us that extra defender, we're going to run a jet pass of some sort, a crack scene, might be a post, might be a post rail, um, but we're, we're going to take a shot right there more than likely as soon as we see it. Uh, if we get a roll in secondary, that's kind of where we started tinkering with the uh, belly sweep with no motion coach because we get a lot of that 
We also put in a play we call super buck. Whenever we, they see motion, whether it be high or jet and they rolling, what we do is we, we show motion, high motion. And when, you, when, when, the, when the motion back gets even with the quarterback, he basically puts his foot in the ground, runs a bubble. And it's kind of like uh, the quick buck that Coach Simpson talks about, okay. but under center. And we just kind of swing pass out there and we run buck right. um, okay. off of it whenever we see that roll or a man. Or if we, if, so if we put our back in motion and the, the DBs and man, he goes with them, we'll run that super buck. Uh, so that's kind of our if thens. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. I, I'm, I'm kind of always like that. That super buck slash quick buck, whatever we, people want to call it, is. I mean, I think that's an interesting little thing that people are starting to develop. They give some answers to some overloads and some other stuff that people are getting. I think that's a good little. Adjustment. It took a while for us to get the time and where we liked it, but yeah. uh, at the end of the year, we had it. We had it kind of, kind of figured out how we how we thought it would be successful. Now, about about how many passes do you throw a game? Out of curiosity, Coach Barry's. Um, my first two years, we didn't throw. Then um, you know we had a quarterback come along that could throw. We threw it five to six times a game. Okay, and that was with the. Uh, First team all district, uh, all state quarterback, state champion javelinary thrower. Okay. Uh, so we don't throw it often, but when we do, it's, it's usually down the field. Um, it's kind of how we do it. This year might be a little different. We have a, a lot of guys who are really good receivers. We got two young quarterbacks that are that are pretty talented. So uh, we're not going to be as big and uh, experienced up front. So we might be forced to throw the ball a lot. Um, yeah. We don't throw a coach unless the defense makes us. Sure. Um, and that usually, you know, the past three years, that might have happened two or three times where we had to throw the ball to win the game. Other than that, we were just throwing it to practice. Um, <laughs> like, so this year when we threw it, it was because we had to throw the ball to win the game. Um, the past two years, um, it was just for fun. Oh, I might, so, put, I might put that on a t-shirt, coach. What's that? Just throwing it to practice. <laughs> Just in case we need it. Oh, um, next year we're gonna need it. So that's, that, 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 in all honesty, that's his second favorite quote I've heard today. Cause you're gonna love this. this. I heard this at a basketball game today. This was by the opposing coach's JV coach, and I sent this out to a couple guys. Give me one second. Um, I sent it out to our coaches group, and and th- and this is. Um, Exactly what they said. Quote of the day: If we don't defend, we will lose. It's good. It's I mean, true. I mean, I mean. Okay, I mean, that's kind of common sense in basketball. If you let them score every time, you can't win. But we'll we'll go with that. That hey, Jack. Oh God. So we, we kind of threw to practice, um, but uh, yeah, I'd say five to six times a game, coach. Uh, on a good year, on a bad year, once a quarter. <laughs> so, all right, so here's your base jet week. You'll see everybody's just reaching. Um, depending on that three tech, we'll sometimes pull that guard, coach, if we think he's too slow to make the play. Um, yeah. In our league, you either get a big, big kid who can't move or you get a, a, a really good athlete who's not good in space. Um, right there at your three tech sometimes. So uh, that's just the basic drawing of it. Y'all know how that is. Jet trap. We call it funny trap with the false pull. Let's get to the uh, overload stuff. All right, so here's our light set, coach. Okay. We're going to automatic crack the X. Halfbacks got the force. Fullbacks responsible for the corner, usually. Uh, we tell this this halfback first color, first threat, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's real simple, minimal blocking. If if these if the quick side tackle and the halfback get the block, we're gonna get positive yards. That's why we like to run it, coach. Yeah. Um, same thing with the toss. Uh, you know, some years we're fortunate we have some some really good linemen. Some years we're we're not as fortunate and. We have to, we're forced to run, you know, outside a little bit more than we'd like to. Um, but 
as long as we have a quick tackle, and that's usually where we put our guy. Our best lineman is usually going to be the quick side tackle coach. Okay. Uh, have you ever thought, if you go back to the, uh, the, have you ever thought about cracking the overhand backer and then using your wing to go to corner and your fullback kind of be more of a immediate threat guy? If that outside uh, linebacker yeah. problem? Yes, sir. That that would work just the same. Uh, we just we kind of kept it simple. You know, he's blocking the sure. same person he blocks on base. Yep. Going to the inside backer, and he's got he's got first color also. So if it's the cornerback, it's the corner. But let's say we miss the backer and he's here, then we'll block the backer, yeah. coach. Sure. I like uh, that a lot. So you don't you don't change any rules. You know. No, I try to change as little as possible on every play, uh, no matter the formation. Uh, it doesn't always work, but that's what we try to do. So um, that's it, weak. Here's the wound. This is kind of like a cutback play. Uh, and we'll do this two ways, Coach. Like you were saying, sometimes we'll have this halfback kind of uh, influence reach, okay. and we'll insert the fullback, or we'll do it vice versa, how it's drawn up here. Um, and all the wingback's doing is he's running jet, and when he gets when he gets the ball, he's going to take two or two more steps, and he's going to kind of shift it down, and he's going to get inside the belly hole. I, I have a buddy that hole. runs this as well. I forget what the heck he calls it. Oh God, because I wanted to install it this year. We just we just didn't have the time. Oh, it's been a good play for us. Yeah. Uh, we don't we don't install it early, coach. It's usually a, a week yeah. five probably play for us. Oh, what do you call it? I don't even remember what he called it now, but yeah, I mean, he runs a very he runs that. He calls it he, he he what he sells it as. I keep trying to get him on the podcast. He's resisted so far. Um, it, Who's that? What's his name? Uh, Kevin Shelb. He's up at uh, he's up in um, at Catholic school up north in northern Ohio. Um, but they run the, they run this. We stole their jet, jet pop pass off of them uh-huh. uh, um, as well. Um, but yeah, he called. He just says this is like a cheaper version of Buck Sweep, really. Um, right there. It's, it's how he he sells it and looks at it. Oh, that's gonna bother me. But if I remember it as we go, I'll say it. But um, but yeah, you can go continue, coach. Sorry. Um, here's the same play, just to the uh, now instead of giving it to the wing back, we're gonna fake it to the wing back. Fullback's gonna influence, reach out here, so it looks the same. X is gonna crack. We're gonna uh and we don't have to Christmas dish right here. We can uh we can double out that if we need to, you know, kind of base it up depending on what we like. But uh we cross blocked it. That's what we call it Christmas. We cross blocked it right there. And uh, the quarterback just pivots like he would on Jet and then follows the halfback. Yeah, I like that because that cause the reverse rollout kind of takes them to it too. You know what I mean? And on this one, we got the ball you no know, drawn up. You can do that if you're playing a team with good technique, but it's not necessary. And, and by the way, I figured it out. He calls it jet lead. There, jet that, lead. Okay. That, that's what he called it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It's a, it's a nice little play. Uh, here's the same play to the quarterback, um, but it's now we're going like against the grain or away from the jet motion. So we're going jet left and we're going, uh, you know, belly strong or wham strong. And uh, fullback's going to insert opposite of the jet. Quarterback's going to pivot and then find the bubble. This play right here, um, we ran this in the uh, second round game that got us to the quarterfinals uh, two years ago. And it, quarterback was uh, six, probably six one, two thirty, and uh, he wouldn't flee the foot, but he ran for a hundred yards on this play right here. And you'll, you'll see some cut ups of that later, uh, coach. But it's a super easy play. You know, we already run Wham Strong uh, out of base. So this the backfield has to learn something new. The linemen are doing their same rules. Yeah. Here's the Joker. Uh, this is a play we got a lot of questions about. And uh, I got this out of an old Carnegie Mellon playbook. Um, I'm sure y'all know the old coach out there that did the wing tee for a long yeah. time. I can't pronounce his name. Uh, y'all know what I'm talking about? Coach? I know who's actually talking about. I can't ever remember his name, though. Rich, uh, it's Rich. Rich. Um, it starts with the E. I can't pronounce it. It's not but, uh, it's He ran it out of a red yeah. set, and we were looking for a play to our fullback, um, you know, out of this overload package we were using because we started using it a lot. This was probably three years ago when we really started using this. We didn't use it as much this year. 
Um, and uh, I just really like this. So just, like I said, this under front right here, um, the blocking scheme was a little bit different. Tight end went straight to backer to tackle kick. The tackle on the weak side kick, the three or wider, and the halfback would lead it up. So it's basically a tackle trap is all it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been a pretty good play for us. I'll show you some cuts up of it. Um, every now and then what will happen is, um, for some reason, the five will get blocked or something goes wrong right here. They don't have a five. They miss a line, and it basically becomes a double lead. Yeah. You'll see that on uh, – on the film also. And uh, that sort of happened so often, we started basing all play side and this double lead and making a tag for it, you know, off of the same basic concept. Or let's say this defensive end's not fighting outside. Let's say he plays a good technique and he squeezes and he sees it. We'll make a stake off for the halfback and he'll just he'll just cut him off right there. So and we'll go over that when we get to the tape. Here's a crack scene. Uh, Fullback's just going to insert, and he's going to go inside backer, no threat to outside. Okay. Uh, quarterback's read on this. The quarterback's read, uh, you want me to tell you the truth, coach, just throw the ball deep because the free safety ain't there no more. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> but it's the, it's, the, it's the free safety. Um, and then the check down, and I'll be honest with you, most of the time we're going to tag a rail. Yeah. So it'll be crack scene with the rail. Okay. Uh. This year, our quarterback wasn't uh, quite as advanced as last year's, so we, we ran the arrow a little bit more, and, you know, we did the check down. But uh, most of the time when we run this coach, it's because the free safety is getting nosy and he's coming up in the box, you know, or, or they're rolling to the motion like that. Uh, that, that and, and in that role that where they rotate everybody is such a horrible adjustment. that like yeah, I, I watched Ohio State do that against Maryland like two or three years ago, and it was absolutely hysterical. And all they did was any time they did that kind of motion, uh -huh. they would run out, They would run jet motion, and then they'd run an outside zone the other way because there was no outside player. All they yeah. had to do was just block this the end, and it was to the house like three times, six we, yards. We had two teams uh, roll motion us this year. Um, and uh, like I said, it didn't. I think uh, one time... What they did was they roll motioned and they 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 kind of stung him off the edge and he made a tackle for a loss on a toss. Yeah. Uh I mean on the jet. But uh other than that, I mean we're pretty much, you know, moved the ball. Um but that was the game where I kind of said, you know what, we need to have something coming out the back door over here. Yeah. Whenever they start rolling. Uh, I have a, so. actually I have something. We can talk a little off screen when we're done here. I have, oh. If that's if that's something that you see more, we had a we had an instance where we had a play that really worked for us. We can talk about that later. Yes, sir. I'd love to see it because we we do get it. You know, probably twice a year. Yeah. Uh, that roll coverage. Well, I mean, heck, I think we even see it at least once or twice, and it every in every year it's somebody different because the team that yep. did it the year before usually probably doesn't do it again because it didn't work the way they wanted it to work. I mean, I when I was DC, I hated roll, having to roll guys. I mean, I like bumping a little bit, but full rolls. You're especially against an offense like this. You're just asking for problems. Mm -hmm. You got every because you got so many plays out the back yeah. door off the motions. Yeah. Well, that well that and you, you, again as we always talk about on here is I, I I'm teaching 14 to 18 year old kids. Okay. Their eye discipline is not necessarily where it needs to be, or their technique is not always necessarily where it needs to be. It's a lot different when you have like NFL guys who who can do some of that stuff, move, shift, roll. That's great, and and because they're getting paid a lot of money, and they're focused on that. I'm, when I'm talking a young kid, who's, I mean, you, they're going to get fatigued, they're going to get undisciplined. It's just going to happen. Do you uh, ever go? To, uh... Uh, wide receiver over to the tight end side? Yes. Yeah, we call that uh, right and left. Okay. So red and blues are base. Right and left is base with the with the X going over to the to the actual direction. Makes sense. Um, but all of our other formations with the tight end is a color. So we might have red, blue, green, and yellow, okay. navy and maroon. Um, and then we had the tags built in off of the colors. We're, we're very similar aspect. We, we, we're we colors, and then we build off the, them with tags. Yeah, that's I, the exact same thing. I, I think that's most 
I think that's I'm not going to say most. That's a segment of the wing T population is that's how a lot of them do Some it. of them use numbers and some of them use colors. Yeah. I'm definitely a uh, I don't do numbers at all. Yeah. Yeah, I mean in the, in this in this case when you got five down line made them fourth linebackers the over doesn't help at all. I mean it really doesn't but we get a lot of four four teams and you just put if you bring a uh wide receiver over to a four four How about like a four two five yeah, there's no adjustment to him yeah it just kind of you get the corner we get the four two five we're running a book yeah. yeah no kidding well like all, all the four two fives we see turn into an automatic four four and really those four four turns into the six twos like that's what we're going to they get. walk them down yeah they walk them down or if they're not fully down they're like one by like they're slightly off but not like off enough to it's weird. I think one team we did, we did see this year did do go like an old school like stack four four, where you'd have. Yeah. Like, we saw they showed that a little bit. That was one of the three because they they gave us like three looks in that game, and we kind of knew it was coming because they played um, Xenia earlier in the year who runs the triple, a lot of similar formations. So we kind of had an idea that might be coming, um, but they had like three ways to answer us. Didn't didn't work, but they had three ways. Do y'all get any like uh, old school fifty? Uh, yeah, uh, we didn't oh, play them this year uh, because of COVID. Um, but yeah, there's a team in our league who's like true. That's a, Derry's actually part of that coaching tree. Um, yeah. Part there there there's a segment of coaching tree out here that's like an old school like fifty defense. Yeah. A couple of the guys yeah. who are younger guys have morphed into more than three four. Also. Hey, and I tell you what, made a couple of fours. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll definitely talk off the record on that one to help beat it for you. Oh, I'm in on that. But I, um, I, I, I'm not going to talk about it on podcast because that's what I really just talked to Win T. And I one of my it. favorite plays versus that coach is Power. Oh, I bet. That's our – so after the Jet series, Power is probably our next favorite Okay. to, to go with. Uh, in the quarterfinals last year, we probably ran it 20 times in a row. Jeez, he beats. Just over and over again. Um, so right here, this is last year's uh, semifinal team. Uh, this kid right here, our tackle is a junior. Uh, six, he was a backup running back last year. He was a starter for us this year. Um, you'll see he, he gets out there. He takes a good first couple steps, and he doesn't really he doesn't really do any work for us out here, though. Um, fullback, also, he was a 1A MVP at linebacker um, for us last year in the state. Uh, so it's a great football player. And then uh, this kid right here is a junior about to run the ball. And you'll see uh, we don't actually do a good job of blocking on the perimeter, um, to be honest with you. You'll see it. But what we did do a good job of is sugar huddling and not letting them get set. And you can see that the camera girl's kind of late. You know, we're halfway into the play. And uh, you'll see 58 stay on his block. Uh, but the actual backs did not do a very good job. Um, a block, and you see number six right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see the line kind of staying on their tracks. They did a pretty good job. Uh, so that was Jet out of overload to the to the weak side. So that's a light set, like we just talked about. Uh, this is going to be out of a heavy set, Coach. Okay. All right. This is later in the game. We're kind of taking our time, and uh, you can see it's an old fifty front. Uh, I put this clip on here just to show everybody the center. Stay on his tracks all the way down the field to the free safety. That's pretty damn, damn good, Coach. That's pretty good. Coach, he was a uh, – he also started – he was our other starting linebacker. Well, that's – I mean, but that's what the effort you want in this, in this offense right there is, is, okay, I might not have somebody directly here. Okay, now I need to move up to the second level. Now I need to move to the third level. That I mean, that's how you get noticed. I mean – as an alignment in the system. And you see most of them stay on their tracks. Only the play side guard really doesn't. Uh, you'll see him down here. He doesn't really stay on his tracks, but we don't have to block that guy on this play anyway. We probably should be pulling him right there, to be honest with you. Now, two, two questions. One, how many offensive line coaches do you have? Uh, two. Okay. And then my second question is, what determines the pull, not pull? Oh, uh, covered, uncovered. Okay. You know, um, or if we see it, you know, on tape, that kid's not going to make the play. Yeah. We'll, we'll tell him to pull. 
they have a call they can make. They call it circle. And circle means go ahead and go. Tells the guard to circle around. Yeah. Um, so a couple different things, coach. But we honestly hardly ever pull. Well, I know there, well, there's like a theory, and, and we, we haven't hit Jet yet in our like individual podcast when we're not in guests. But, there, I mean, the two biggest theories is do you pull the guard, do you not pull the guard? Like, I get I, – it's, it's either everybody reaches or – you kind of do that. I think I think the pull guard motion is for those people that run buck well or mm-hmm. like bucks their base play because you're also yep. you're essentially simulating the trap, the buck, and the jet are all like the same blocking scheme wise. It's the same, to, from my understanding. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people tell me to pull them just because, like I'm telling you, we we want to make sure because in our league there might be a an act down here you know yeah. not an actual defensive lineman type kid and he'll run the field make a play if we don't block him now this this team's a bigger team but they don't have a lot of speed yeah uh so that was a big play for us and uh like i said the center blocking downfield great kid that's beautiful uh, again on this one sugar huddle this is early in the game probably the first drive coach so we're fresh. We're getting to the line of scrimmage quick. And uh, you'll see the X over here crack. He does a pretty good job. You know, you can't actually crack anymore. You got to kind of just get in the way, set a screen. Um, all of our backs do a pretty good job of faking and, and blocking for one another right here. Um, you see the strong side tackle does a good job staying on his track. Everybody's kind of working in the same direction. Backs blocking down the field. And, uh, yeah. We played this team in district, and then we turned around and played them in the uh, quarters last year. Nice. So we were in sweep on them the first game, and then we were in power the second time. Okay. Uh, so. Now, what from, from huddle to snapping the ball for your sugar huddle, what's kind of your goal there? Uh, Four seconds. Okay. Four seconds. Um, and so a couple of times this year, early in the year, we would, you know, the referees are warning that you got to slow down, you got to slow down. And I'm like, we're going to do it until they call it. Yeah. And once, once they call it, what I tell the quarterback to do is, all right, now we're going to slow down, get to the line of scrimmage, say one, and then go. And so that's kind of how we fix it if, if we're going too fast. Yeah. Uh, another, another thing, Wing T guys that do sugar is uh, do you flip your line or do you not slip your line? That's okay. a big question. Like we flip ours. My buddy does not that sugar huddles, and I got another buddy who does flip. I mean, I so didn't... we uh, the first two years we sugared, we we still flipped, and it slows you down a little bit. Yeah. So what we did was we uh we kind of kept it simple. I'd call. We didn't sugar huddle all the time either at this point. So I'd call the sugar huddle, and the lineman knew if I called sugar. They weren't flipping anymore, and we just ran toss, jet, buck, and wedge. So it's not thinking plays. Everybody's stepping down. Everybody's reaching plays. There's no thinking involved. Now, when you guys run wedge, do you tighten down your splits? Try the sugar? Okay. Yes, sir. Yep. And it's so fast, you know, you can't really. Yeah. Uh, But those are only plays we would run from the sugar. Uh, This year, we ran everything, you know, out of the sugar huddle. Okay. No, I get, no, I get it, coach. And like I said, like again, those are no thinking plays. So, and I love wedge. Wedge is one of my favorite plays. Oh, we love it. I, I had a former head coach. Uh, the year after I left, I came back because because I had a Thursday night game that week, and they played Friday. And so I came. I was standing on the sidelines watching the game, and he <laughs> he read wedge five times in a row. And then they bit in so much. He read Rocket the fifth play for a touchdown. They like bit in so hard. Yeah, just they I were. I mean, bite. you may, if, you, if, if they're not mad enough to get in there and stop it, run no. it until they stop it. No, that's, he, that's what we do. Anytime nah. we find a play that works, we're gonna run it over and over. Like I told y'all, we ran power probably twenty times. He just started rotating fullbacks and just read it. Hit it. Uh, on, in this game right here, we ran a sweep. We got a call for a hold. Holding. Mm-hmm. So then we're like, we scored on it. I'm like, man, coach, what you think? He's like, bootleg. I'm like, coach, they don't. It's third and long. 
jet pass. I'm like, let's return the same play. Surely we can get 20 yards. We just got 70. <laughs> <laughs> and then we scored on it back to back. And this this kind of this team kind of gave up after that. Um, but you see, we ran Jet and Joker versus them a good bit this game. You'll see the Joker versus this same team. Uh, so that's just the Jet. Like I said, because it's super simple, minimal blocking. As long as you get this guy on his block and these guys on the edge blocking, you, you have a shot. See the tight end blocking all the way down the field from the backside. Little things like that, you know, that goes a long way for us. Well, you that see that's that right there, and me and Coach Derry talk about that all the time. Is that's how you can tell kids have bought into what you're doing. Coach, that kid right there, number ten. He played from his freshman year to his senior year. He graduated last year. He played every position on offense but the line. And then his senior year, we had to move him to tight end. He was kind of like our utility guy. He also started at cornerback. It was all district. <laughs> that's all. That, I mean, that helps, coach. But like I said, that, that to me, that's. I mean, you just watching these few clips, you can tell that is they've bought into what your system. Like they're hustling, they're moving their butts. I mean, we, me and my head coach and our OC have talked about that a couple times. Like our one wing this year, he did not care if he ever got the ball. He would sell that's, out on blocking. Huge, coach. He sell, now, sold, sold out on blocking. He 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 most he, he did whatever we asked him to do and like so that's you can you can see that in film that's that's yeah, for sure yeah see th- these kids right here um are seniors from last year we kind of have a funny story I was coaching at another high school nearby and my my wife's uh, uncle was their pee wee coach so he asked me to come and help him so I actually got to coach these kids from the age of nine and ten all the way up to their senior year only missing like one year. Uh, was ball for him. So it was a pretty cool experience. And, uh, you know, you get really tight with kids like that when yeah. you're around. You, you get tight with kids you're with for four years. So, um, you know, you add, add four more years to it. And uh, But that kid right there, and our, our offensive line coach just teaches this. He actually teaches this, like, you can see how he's sticking his arm out like that. Yeah. He actually teaches that technique as part of his reach block process. Well, I, I've seen, like, because cause I'm also a special teams coordinator, I've seen some special teams guys teach that for some of the, uh, like, punt return blocking stuff, too, as you go downfield. And- hey, he's doing that with, I'm like, coach. He left. He left this year. You know, he was a, he was my eye in the sky. And he was our offensive line coach. And uh, he did a great job for us. And he's shown him that. I'm like, what? What are you, like, what are you doing? He's like, Coach, just trust me. We did this at my last school. It, it works down the field. I'm like, all right. And, and it does. So yeah. uh, we still do it. He's gone. We don't do it as good, probably. <laughs> but uh, it does work for us. I think that's the last jet clip. Yep. Yeah. All right. I love it. Let's go to the match, too, man. That's what makes it so hard. Yeah, especially when they all buy in. Like Coach said, uh, this year – we had a little bit of an issue with that later on in the season. The guys kind of got complacent. And, uh, like, when you, if I show you some clips, you know, with those guys, you, you would see the difference. Okay. This was the first first game we ran this. So this was probably three years ago right here, Coach. Okay. This was the first time we ran this Joker uh, playoff to Jet. And we're, we're trying to just get a play for our fullback, who was our best football player. Woo. Not necessarily our best runner, but our best football player. That boy's got some got some wheels. Um, so good fake, good job. The the guard you see pulling. So the first year we also made a call, coach. Depending on the front, the guard or tackle would would trap. This year and the last year, this tackle trap no matter what. Okay. Now for alignment purpose, we're. Where is actually your fullback? Is he over the tackle in between the guard and tackle? He's over the tackle. Okay. He's over the tackle. Now he's going to take a small jab step and then go. This is the same game. Like I literally was looking through the Carnegie Mellon playbook like Monday of this week, and I saw that they were in a shade 5'9 or under front. And I saw that play was drawn up versus that front, and I was like, oh, we're going to run this off the jet, coach. And you can see how excited I get when it works. <laughs> on the bottom of the screen down there, Coach. You see a white head pop up. <laughs> so, but the, uh, the guard right here does a great job on the trap. Just enough to give us a crease. See the back blocking downfield. Um, it's a pretty clean little look. 
This is the same team the very next year. They came in the same front. Well, I got. I almost got in an argument with our um, offense coordinator and a couple other people throughout the seasons. Like, it didn't work last year. They're going to run it again. They're not going to run it again. And then there's other weeks like, well, this worked last year. They they think it's going. They're going to run it again. Like, coaches are are fairly characteristic. If they think it works, they're going to run it again. Yeah, they quit it. I if know it, I will. If they got abused by it, they're not going to line up in the exact same thing. You might see it a handful of times, but they're going to have a different adjustment. They just will. Like another another thing we'll do to sugar coaches, we'll take a little bit. We'll we'll give a couple seconds if we're in an overload shift front, and we know we know we want them to kind of start playing that jet. We'll kind of slow down and let them see it. You know, okay. instead of trying to go fast enough where they can't see it. Uh, this one there. Uh, their forte actually does a great job of blowing up the trap, and then you know, the back just makes a good play on the uh, on, a, on a run right here. Uh, but you see the wall, yeah, that's okay. by number ten right here. You can see the you can see the wall they they created right there. The trap actually gets blown up, but he's still able to bounce it outside because the guy's blocking on their assignments. Not a bad fake, but he could have gave us a little more, you know, a few steps right there. Uh, yeah. But overall, not a bad play. This is a private school in our district. Uh, they've got some pretty good athletes. Sorry, to, to, my camera's a little wide on this one, but you can see there's nobody to trap. Can you see that coach right there? Great. Oh, there's no one to trap. Coaches, so I guess I gotta up. sneak out real quick to you talk. Oh. You see that, coach? Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, that's just. Well, ha go back. What's what happened to him? What influence? They just, they just, they didn't have a, they didn't have a. Oh my god! So once he saw that, he just turns it up and becomes an escort block. Look at what is he doing? Watch. Look at this. Look, go back. Oh my goodness gracious. Holy cow, look at this, this linebacker just running away. There's a D lineman, he did like a stunt. Just took off, went bye bye. Yeah. So I love it. I love I love when teams try to do silly stuff like that in the wind team. This one you can get a good look at the tight end, how he's supposed to kind of block that right there. They call this our clip, but that was perfect setup. You can see it. Backers flow. Oh, they see it. It's a little bit too late. You see what I'm yeah. saying, coach? That's still. The deception's there, and it just hits really fast. Right there, he's got his butt to the hole nice. And they caught him for a block in the back, but whatever. We got him. This is just a, a different variation. This is just your basic tackle trap. It doesn't do much for us. I just, I had it on here. And that's it. So that's the tackle trap, coach. I we'll like go, it. We'll go to the jet pass. Before I go to the jet pass, let me show you this one. I think you'll like this one. Y'all like Wedge? Did you say this Wedge? Is, uh, Coach, if you like Wedge, you might like this little wrinkle. Oh, I love Wedge. That's... We get an a, a odd front, especially with, like, some uh, fours. We'll double fold. We'll just run it off the jet, straight up the pipe. Trap <laughs> pad, double fold. Pretty good inside run for us. That's beautiful. Easy install. Like the jet back doesn't do a very good job. This is this year's team. Uh, you can see the fake's not near what it was last year, right there by that kid. Can you slow that down for me, coach? Just so I can slow it down. Yes, yeah. sir. Let me run it back. So the guards are blocking out. It's double fold by the tackles coming inside. And what the fullback's taught to do is read the butt of the center and make his cut. And that's it. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely beautiful. It's a nice little play. I only run it versus an odd front. If we get an even front and I had to call, we're going to check to something else. Uh, just because it's hard to do when you have like a, a one tech or a two. It gets a little bit murky. So I only do it if I have a nose and a four or nose and threes, something like that. We got one more clip of it. I think that's it right here. Same team. 
You know, we knew they were going to come out in that old 50. We call it. I'll slow it down for you. It actually gets blown up on the on the left on the right side. You can see that the tackle that's supposed to fold kind of has some trash. You got he can't get around, but the center does such a good job of making that block, and the other tackle gets through and gets on the linebacker. Good little run. Five was a pretty good back for us. Tough, tough kid. He was our wing back the year before. Well, that's fantastic. So it's an easy little adjustment. That's another inside run that we do. Double fold. And let's go to the uh, to the jet pass, coach. I mean, it's kind of ironic. Lately, our, our our gap down backer podcast has become a passing podcast. By the time this comes out, like, I mean, um, I got a ton of these. If y'all want to see some more, but these are just uh, I'll put on the jet again. These are just a couple of them that I have. This is our favorite play action, um, especially if you got a quarterback with a big arm. So this the receiver out here was a uh, state champ hurdler. Our quarterback was state runner and the uh, jab, state runner up. See the crack seam, you see they're special. We call it special, it's a rail, wide open. Just, and uh, so on that coach, he's reading that he's reading the free safety to the corner. Like, I love how I love how your receiver just bulldozes a kid on that play. Just absolutely, just I think it's man, well. coach. We wish he could have played defense. He hurt his back his sophomore year, and uh, we only we only could really play in that receiver. His mom said so. That's what we did. He was a stud. I, I mean, he he just throttled twelve there. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's one way to sell you running the ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the uh, that was the rail with it. That's kind of uh, what we do after we teach you know the base flat route or arrow route with it. Oh man. You can see watch the uh, free safety putting his nose where it don't belong. Yep. Watch him. As soon as the motion comes, watch seven. Oh, I'm I'm coming. No, too late. Nice and easy. And it's really not as hard of a throw as you would think, Coach. I mean, no, it isn't. Like, I, I, I've run it at a couple schools. It's just like, especially when you, again, like you pointed out, those safeties that just, like, want to just fly down. This is the same team. Wow, you can see them. Oh, this is the Lord. other safety this time. That's abusive. Now, I think we did a post. I think this is a post. Let's see. Nope, crack scene. Yeah. Quarterback is kind of through this. I mean, it's so open. That's what I was telling you, Coach. There's... Let's just throw it, because we're not we're not calling it unless we see in this. Yeah, and so, and I'll uh, I'll pull up some from this year, so you can see the difference. It works with the quarterback with the big arm, or just the average, you know, high school quarterback. On this one, he should have threw to the rail, probably. Yeah, I mean, because you yeah, that, I mean that. They adjusted well to that, but I mean, it was yeah. still there. Yeah, he, he should have threw the rail for sure. Yeah, he should have took the rail. Yeah. On this one right here, they weren't coming up yet. This was that big team I was telling you about. Didn't have a lot of speed. I said, Coach, can we throw one right here? He's like, they ain't coming up yet. I said, Coach, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> Coach Ward is better athletes. They weren't coming up at all, Coach. No, but still. It's... This is one of those ones where we were throwing it just to throw it. Yeah. Like I said, I might just I I might literally make a t shirt that says just throwing it to practice at this point. I like that. That's I I would I would get it, Coach. <sighs> Uh, you see, the, the pass protection on it's pretty simple. We bob it. We might hinge backside. The tight end's going to step hinge. Everybody else is bob. Uh, fullback's going to step up a gap to the outside, you know, wherever the threat comes. Um, but for sure, we want to take the quarterback's face first. I'm going to show you a clip where he doesn't do that in a minute, and you can see what happens. 
This is a post with the special. Look at the special. The, the oh, real. Good. Cool. Look at him. Crazy. But he clapped afterwards. He didn't pout. No. Because, you, you know, because as I, as I tell, ask kids, and, I, and I've had this conversation with a couple kids since the end of the season about switching positions, maybe where we need them next year. I'm like, do you want to play? And then do you want to win? Yep, that's the key. If those are the two, watch the, the fullback. I'm sorry, coach. The fullback goes up to a gap, yeah. no threat. He ends up blocking from the backside on this one. So he just got his head on a swivel, nothing coming. He actually sort of probably went to that guy on the outside to the play side. Yeah. But either way, he's working. You know, he's working quarterback's face to outside threat. So he should have been on the defensive end to the right that was unblocked. But that rail. But Sweet luckily, the jet, the jet kind of held him for it long enough. The rail is so open. Uh, but didn't do a good job of stepping up. Yeah, he he was a pretty special receiver for us last year. That kid. Yeah, I see that. I mean, did a pretty good job. And the sad thing is, I'm looking at your arrow route here. Wide open. Well, one, it's wide open, but I'm also looking at, like, you could have also just done that and probably gotten 40 yards. Because... Yeah. And, and when we have a quarterback who can't make that throw, that's kind of what we do. Yeah. Um. But my thinking is when we throw the ball, we're throwing it to back them up, so why not take a shot? Yeah, no, yeah. I get it. No, I get it 100%, Coach. I Like I said, I, I just think either way, looking at it, like, you would have had... Yeah, they're that, done regardless. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're because 15 right there ain't tackling that era guy. One thing I like about jet motion, it's not that it's a knock on Buck. I, mean, I think Buck is a BA play for obvious reasons, but there's nothing, and I love seeing it in college and, and even in the NFL. I'm a big uh, Los Angeles Rams fan, especially now when the Bengals are bad. It's just how much jet motion opens up the field and just stretches it. I mean, it. It's the most horizontally and vertically stretching motion I've ever seen. And to me, when you, yeah. when you pair it, so vertically you pair it with the crack seam, horizontally yeah. you're running jet, you know, you're kind of getting, you're stretching them both ways with the same with the same series. Here's the waggle out of, off the jet, Coach, where we actually do hit the flats. This was a team we had no business beating. They had some dudes. I don't know, man. They, you guys look a lot bigger than them. No, Coach. My no. Lord, they're huge. They're huge. Yeah, they look like... I bet, not a front, I bet there's not a guy on the front line that's less than 230 right there. No, they were huge. I got a picture of my center blocking their nose, and I have it on my wall. It's hilarious. Well, yeah, I, I, there was one time we played a team so small that if you look at the end zone camera, you couldn't see a guard in a three-point stance. Which I think they jumped up on us 14 to nothing. Okay. All they had to do was run the clock out. Well, that well again. That's where sometimes size can be a little deceptive when you have a good scheme and players that have bought in. Like you go back to that Coastal Carolina BYU game the other night. Yeah. I mean, Coastal's line. Is, I'm not saying they're tiny. They're all, I mean, they're still Division One athletes, but I don't know. Uh, they had a guy that was like five foot nine. Yeah, the but there was a big. But there was a big difference between. BYU, who had a bunch of juniors and seniors on their team that are 23, 24 years old, 22, and Coastal Carolina, that's got a bunch of 19-year-old kids. Yeah. That was a fun game. Here's your waggle again off the jet. We get it off barely, but we get a big pop on this one. Good job of my Ooh. tight end over there blocking down the field. He was a energetic player for us. Well, we just got to talk about that on our previous podcast when we were talking about belly pass variations, about how important some of those downfield blocks by your other receivers are for the shorter routes. So, uh, I'll show you the quarterback wham, Coach, if I can find it. Give me one second. You're good, Coach. Take your time. There you go. So right here we sugar huddle. So our camera girl's a little late, you know, get to the party. Uh, that happens a couple times a game if we're going pretty fast. Uh, not necessarily anymore because we've had the same girls for a while, but uh, this was their first year. And uh, this was also our first year of sugaring. But you can see the fullback insert. 
and the quarterback running against hey, you know it's good look up go back to the top look at number four this dude has no idea what planet he's on <laughs> like going man it feels four, like this guy right. oh this dude right here yeah look this at that. Dude, he's just chilling man. Oh. He's looking over here yeah. yeah this number please just chilling here oh crap 10 yards down the field and the, the line does a decent job of creating a block a wall but they don't actually stay on their blocks but they did just enough you know to give us a little a little room to run Yeah, I got to coach uh, that kid right there. That's my wife's nephew. So I've been coaching. I coached him from 10 years old to his senior year. That's pretty neat. So he got a lot of earfuls. <laughs> this one, you might get to see it. He could have been a little bit more patient on the fake the yeah, quarterback. I was, to, I was about to say, he didn't even let his, let his uh, blocker, the lead blocker there. Uh... Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, this was the first time that we ran it in the game. Uh, they didn't have a five technique. I mean, you see them? yeah. There. I mean, so I was like, let's just run quarterback ISO. He was that, like, let's do it. That's and the tight end does a great job too, of basing the nine. And if he was a runner, he just scored, but he was a thrower. So he ran for 100 yards this game. We ran power and quarterback Lamb and Jet. That's all we ran in the second half, and we came back and won this one. They did not like to tackle the power, coach. And they kept throwing it. And they should have just tried to run the clock out. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, that's the only that's the only clips I had of the quarterback one. Very good, coach. So, oh, looks like we just lost Derek. Uh, I'll show you that that la that uh the laser one. What we yeah. call it, that's our jet motion. So we're gonna jet motion and cut it up. You can kind of see it. Not a big pop, but keeps them honest, you know? Yeah. You see the, the, the halfback influences and the fullback inserts. We base blocked it. Not a bad play. Other than that, Coach, I think that's it. Well, that, and that's probably a good time to wrap up because Coach Deary just texted me and... I can't use all the language he used in this since we're doing a podcast, but um, blank, 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 blank. Our power just went out. Uh, oh no! <laughs> so hey, I, tell them to get with me about. Uh... Yeah. So here, let me let me wrap this up, and then then we'll chit chat for a second, Coach. Um, so, uh, Coach, I want to thank you. Um, I appreciate you coming on. I, I mean, that's some good stuff. I, I, I got some. Thanks for having me, Coach. It was fun. I I, I, I had a couple notes here. I I, lo I love the wedge fold. I think that's a good little thing and. Um, like I said, a couple notes on under. I, I liked your little if, if then chart that you had set up already drawn up in your playbook too. I think that's. I mean that, that I mean we we talk about that all the time. I mean, and some people try to dog the offense because of it, and other people really like the offense because of it because there's a kind of a lot of the series in this offense are if then if, if you're getting this do this if you get this you can do that and I mean a lot of that stuff you showed us today were, was was pretty good. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming on. Um, coaches, if you want to get a hold of Coach, um, his contact information uh, will be in the bio. His, his Twitter will be in there. Uh, he's got the um, entitled Speed Kills, right? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Speed Kills is, is his Twitter page. Um, contact him there. He's doing some. I think I know he's setting up some uh, clinic, some little clinics and stuff with some guys. Some clinics um, and some various other stuff he's doing. Um, Coach is doing some good stuff, and they've been doing a really good job down there um, in Louisiana and the program they've built. Um, very competitive. Um, so, again, if you want to reach out to him, please contact him below. All that information is below. Uh, whether you're listening to this on one of the po various podcast sites or on YouTube, all that contact information is below in the bio. Uh, we appreciate it, and uh, we will see you next time on the Gap Down Backer Podcast.